Okay, let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And uh, the plan is today is, to, is in my session to take a look at how we can integrate an open source software update solu solution on your custom board. Uh, a quick session overview. Uh, I will start off uh, with some background about me and uh, why I'm doing this. Uh, and then we'll jump straight to the different projects that are available to us. And uh, on each project, I plan to provide a quick info about what the actual project is, uh, requirements to be able to run it on your, on your custom boards, uh, because they have requirements. Uh, and I will also provide uh, insights on integration points uh, that these projects have. Uh, I will focus my integration insights on uh, the Yocto project because all of these projects that I have here uh, have that as the official integration method. Uh, but there is a possibility to in integrate these projects either with build root or manually uh, if you're not using a specific build system. Uh, and a bit of background, uh, I work as a contractor uh, at a company called NDM Technologies. Uh, we are based in Sweden, so I'm a long way from home at the moment. Uh, I am uh, I'm also involved in, one of, in uh, two of the projects that I listed that I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover. Uh, Mender is one of them, where I've been an active community member for a while now. Uh, uh, but I've also made contributions to software update. Uh, and uh, I'm involved in various other open source projects. Uh, but on my day-to-day my -day work, I usually, what I do is help out uh, our clients deploy embedded Linux devices, uh, where I do board support package development, basically. Uh, and this includes uh, hardware bring up, uh, a board support board support in a bootloader, uh, normally U-boot, board support in the Linux kernel, uh, in some cases uh, some custom device drivers, uh, and normally there's some kind of user space or custom distribution based on Yocto, UE core. Uh, but nowadays uh, this also includes uh, integrating an open source software update solution, for me at least, uh, and uh, that is part of my delivery, so to say. Uh, I have been, I have worked in projects where we have tried to make our homegrown uh, updaters, so to say, uh, and I've been down that path, and, uh, and they were normally of poor quality and barely worked, and, uh, and that's what I, when I started to look at the available open source project instead, instead of building our own, because someone already has done uh, a huge amount of the work that you can build upon. And uh, some of these solutions are basically as close as you can get to an uh, out-of-the-box solution. I just wanted to mention some previous talks on this topic, uh, because I'm going to focus on in the integration of each project and not so much on what differentiates the features of the project. Uh, but these are from 2016 and the Better Linux conference that does a more head-to-head -head comparison of the different projects and how do they, they do the updates and pros and cons and so on. I've also written, I also have a site where I've written and I'm, I am writing a, a series of articles covering uh, these projects that I'm talking about here, but more hands-on where I, and I'm also providing tutorials for how to use them on, or get started on their reference boards. Uh, so if you're interested, take a look. Uh, but the plan is to Get straight to it. Mender is an end-to-end open source updater for connected devices. Uh, and Mender is an end-to-end -end solution that is open source. That is, you have a Mender client that runs on your device, and uh, there is a server component that's also open source uh, that where you can manage your devices and deployments. Uh, but the key takeaway here is, uh, from an integration point is that the vendor uses symmetric AB image updates. Uh, 
which I will talk about a bit more. Uh, so if we go into the requirements that are required by Mender, uh, Mender requires that you run U-Boot as a bootloader. That's the only bootloader that's supported, supported at the moment. I know that they are looking at expanding that, but uh, but they rely on some features in, bo in the bootloader to do the um, uh, root file system switching. Uh, yeah, there's a feature in U-Boot called Boot Count M and Boot Count Limit uh, that they rely on, and that's um, basically a, a counter that's in the environment, e boot environment, that needs to be reset uh, once the device boots. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, you have an alt alternative boot command that you can like, if you have a failed boot, you can do something else, so to say. And Mender utilizes this. Uh, and your U-boot must support this, and this is post-2014, I think, U-boot. Uh, you need to store the persistent, uh, persistent storage of U-boot environment, so it has to be stored on EMMC or on a flash, and it has to be permanently stored, so not in a ROM uh, where it's volatile. Uh, Mender also relies on, on, on a set of tools, uh, FV, ZENV, and, and GetENV, which are user-space user tools to man manipulate the U-boot environment. And as I mentioned, it is a requirement that you have two partitions for your root file system uh, because Mender does. And the thing is that you have one active uh, root file partition and one in inactive. So when you update, you, you update the inactive one, reboot and switch, so to say. And that way you can always roll back to the previous if the, the, the intended one doesn't work properly. Uh, Mender also requires one partition for pers pers persistent storage, where it will store some uh, logs of the log events of the update procedure. Uh, and Mender only runs on uh, EMMCs, SD cards, uh, and UB volumes. Uh, and if you start looking on how to integrate Mender. Uh, it's heavily focused, as I, as I mentioned, all these pro projects are focused on Yocto to op optimize the a seamless integration. Uh, there is an option to run. There is on its way, I think, or maybe on upstream in build root, um, Mender support as well. Uh, but there's a meta Mender layer, uh, which is a collection of layers. So you have a meta Mender core, then you have some meta Mender Raspberry Pi, meta Mender demo, uh, which are, well, uh, Metamend Raspberry Pi is the board specific one. Uh, and what you normally want to do is include Metamender core, uh, then you have to inherit the Mender class, uh, which is the Mender full, which will bring you all the features that the Mender offers, uh, so to say. Uh, and if you're lucky, that's all you need to do, because Mender nowadays support uh, fully automatic U boot patching. So they try to automate the integration to your custom board. Uh, but this does have some requirements, so you have to run. This is only supported on the Rocco uh, Yocto branch. Uh, you probably need to have something, a recent U-boot for this to work. Uh, and this only works on EMMC SD card uh, layouts. Uh, and the output from MetaMender when you build, uh, you get an SD disk image, uh, which is the image that you use to provision your devices. So it's an image that contains all the partitions that are required from Mender. So this is provided. Uh, and the .mender file is a Mender artifact. This is what you give the, to the client to update the devices. Uh, but it's basically a TOR archive containing a binary root file system uh, with some metadata on top of it. But if we take a closer look at this automatic U-boot patching, uh, if that fails, uh, because it doesn't work on all boards, you still have to do it, then you have to do it manually. Uh, and the main integration point for Mender is you need to make some changes in U-boot. Uh, so there are two patches that are board independent that Mender carries uh, that you need to apply uh, to your U-boot. 
And this is uh, basically a set of variables and script and commands uh, that are defined by the board in independent patches. Uh, there is, and then you have to provide one board specific patch, and that means integrating the generic Mender commands in your custom board boot command, so to say. Uh, and you also may have to make sure that you have the boot count and, and limit enabled, uh, and you have to make sure that boot env options like is in MMC or Flash to store it permanently. But if you take a look, closer look, uh, this is normally what our integration, custom integration layer looks like. So it's basically one patch and a, BB, a couple of BB appends. This is actually remove MetaMender Bigabone, doesn't exist in the recent releases because the automatic Qboot patch patching takes care of this. Uh, and uh, for, yeah, for, the, for, for custom Qboot uh, forks, uh, you have to include, to ma make sure to include the uh, Mender specific uh, include files to get the board independent patches uh, because they normally work only on uh, upstream U-boot. So if you have a custom U-boot fork, you have to have custom BB appends as well. Um, but if you take, take a look at what the actual patch uh, looks like uh, and the changes that are required, so basically it's just changing if you have a, the boot command in U-boot, like run MMC boot, so you have to prepend that with Mender setup and uh, append try recovery. And the try recovery is in case of MMC boot fails, it's gonna run some script trying to like roll back the previous uh, image, so to say. Uh, and one has to remove all hard-coded uh, parts of the EMMC. Uh, and there are specific Mender variables and, uh, and this is what the uh, Mender setup script actually sets up these uh, Mender variables uh, because we have a dynamic uh, root file system. It's either A or B. So we have to have some way to switching bit between them. Uh, and that's basically it uh, for the integration of Mender uh, that's needed. Uh, and they do provide a quite extensive well, a checklist that you go through uh, to make sure that you've done all the integration points. Uh, but that should get you an overview uh, of it. And uh, the next project is called uh, LibOS3. Uh, mostly explained, well, described as Git for operating system binaries because it has a very Git-like command interface. Uh, and the key takeaway from this one is that it does image up updates, but binary deltas. So it applies binary diffs instead of, because Mender does, for example, uh, full image updates. Uh, and uh, LibOS3 is able to do delta binary updates. Uh, and some of the requirements, uh, because LibOS3 doesn't really, uh, require a specific partition table. You have one partition for your root file system. Uh, but, it, so, and it, but the only real requirement is hard links, that your file system supports hard links, because that's how, how it does the delta thing. Uh, but there are some requirements, or so to say, in, when you use LibOS3, you never boot a physical root FS. So you have to boot to a ROM disk, uh, uh, that will set up the physical root file system and then do a chain root, uh, change root into the physical sys root. Uh, LibOS3, everything that's managed in, by LibOS3 is in slash user. So you can't, you can't have files outside user that, that you want to manage, manage with LibOS3. Uh, and you, slash user is mounted read only, that's a requirement. Uh, from it. And LibOS3 also said, uh, has a, yeah, they had, it has basically three catalog directories that are special. It's slash user, slash var is the persistent state. So everything that you want to keep, you write slash var. 
because uh, libos won't touch that. And then you have slash ATC uh, that I will talk about a bit later. Uh, but generally, libos is quite complex uh, to set up because uh, because of these requirements that it has that you have to have everything in user, uh, which brings on some compli complexity and that we are not used to really. Uh, but thankfully, there is there is actually a Yocto layer uh, called Meta Updater that does all the hard work for you, like does the make sure that it, that you move everything to slash user and uh, make sure that you have, get the client on on board. Uh, Meta Updater actually comes from uh, a project called Genevi, uh, where they developed, uh, because there is a, a client called Actualizer, which is able to communicate with the server backend as well. Uh, but you can use Meta Updater in a standalone mode if you want to in integrate LibOS3, basically. Um, so it, it's simply uh, including Meta Updater in your BB layers. Then you have to inherit Suta. Uh, what you also get from the meta updater, you all, as output, is uh, you get a ROM disk image that you need to boot that will do the setup of the libos 3 physical sysroot and change root, to it, change root into it. So you get that as output, basically, so you don't have to do anything. Um, and you get a, a deployment sysroot, which is quite, quite important. Uh, so every time you do a Yocto build, it will do commit your changes, so to say. Because LibOS3 does Delta updates, you need to keep track of all the changes that are being done all the time. So by using Meta Updater, it will set up a repository uh, for you, which, are, which you then use to deploy to your device. Integration point is really simple, really. Uh, all you have to do is make sure that your board boots the ROM disk that is provided by Meta Updater. And then the ROM disk takes over and does all the setup, uh, which is board independent, so to say. Uh, so this is an example script from, uh, they have a Raspberry Pi as a re reference board. Uh, and this is what the integration script looks like. And the only parts that are in bold here are basically US3 specific. Uh, the other things are generic things that you need to boot uh, a Linux system with you boot. Uh, and yeah, did I want to say something more here? Please interrupt me with questions along the way. I forgot to say that, so please, if you have anything. Uh, yeah. And you have, you have to also think about these three specific directories, which do impact, have impact on your system the design, actually, more. Uh, and this is the, the hard part, I guess, of integrating LibOS3, that you have to uh, well, we are restricted in this matter, so to say. Uh, and slash var is empty by default, so if you want to have anything there at build time, you have to make sure that uh, you get something installed there. Um, yeah, and uh, jumping on to the next one, uh, SV, SVW update. Uh, is a Linux update agent with the goal to provide an efficient and safe way to update embedded systems. Uh, so this one is a bit different from um, the previous two that I covered, so if, because this project aims to be a framework and a set of tools more, uh, while Mender and Meta Updater are more out of the box solutions. Uh, but this project is instead like you're given a bunch of tools to update systems, but there's not re nothing really there's no restrictions, there's no requirement. You can basically do anything with it. But that also like um, makes the integration harder because well, you have to de design your update system. You're only given the tools to execute it by this project. And that this makes it a bit hard to provide really insights how you're gonna in integrate it. Uh, but they do have some uh, 
starting points. So there is a Metas SV update uh, layer uh, where you get the, there's a client running on your device. Uh, so you have the recipe for the client. Uh, it will also it has some recipes for a recovery OS image. Uh, and there is a software update baby class that uh, make, enables you to build images that software update understands, basically. Uh, and then there's a meta software update boards, which is uh, sort of a reference implementation so on how you integrate uh, with software update. Uh, and there's three boards that are supported at the moment. It's Bigabone, Black, Raspberry Pi 3, and uh, Wanda board. And all the examples here is also symmetric AB updates uh, that they have in Meta Software Update Board. Uh, and the integration is really through the software description files that Software Update has. So it's a simple text file based on libconfig syntax, uh, where you have different handlers and uh, tasks that you can execute. Uh, and if we, if we look at the example image, this is the bigger bone black uh, image. That's part of Meta Software Update Boards. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So it says it has a copy one and a copy two. Uh, but if we look closer of these, uh, what the copies contain, so they con contain a, an image, they contain a script and a U-boot command. And the image is basically yeah, a Tor archive. Where do you want to install, unpack it? Uh, and this is like software update, understands this syntax and executes it. Uh, there's also a script in this particular setup uh, that's, that is run before the update. Uh, and software update supports Lua scripts. Uh, and this particular script actually partitions the SD card. So you have, if you don't have two partitions, it will create one extra uh, the first time you do an update. And that's why the script is there. And then in the U-boot command, that's by basically the integration point here. Uh, because they need to set which, which part we are going to boot from. Uh, and this is done here, and it basically overwrites the boot command uh, with the new part. Uh, and this is, it's, it's a quite good starting point. Uh, I would also like to mention that there's a talk today, I think it's around three, uh, where they explain a bit of the possibilities of software update, uh, what, what they have done with it, uh, so to say. So if you're interested, you can go to that as well. Um, then we have Resin.io, uh, which is not a simple updater compared to the previous three that we just had. Uh, Resin.io is a new workflow or a new, yeah, it's a new workflow for embedded system, basically. So it's a way of running apps in containers on embedded devices. Uh, So and they, they have actually two different kind of updates in Resin. Uh, because they run ap applications in containers, they can utilize uh, the layering com feature of container technology to update um, binaries, deltas, basically. Uh, but if you want to up update the operating system underlying and, uh, container applications, they deploy also an AB strat strategy. Uh, and in that case, you don't have any delta updates. It's just a full image for the operating system. Uh, and Resin.io works with U-Boot and Grub. Uh, and it's usually done with uh, update hooks in user space, where they, have, um, where they have the variable that says, OK, I want to boot from part A or part B is in these text files, basically. Uh, and U-Boot then imports these files or Grub uh, to determine which device, which part of the boot. Um, 
but to, to be able to use resin, you have to integrate resin OS, which is a Yocta-based distribution. So it's a full distribution that you have to integrate on your device, and not just an updater, uh, because really this is a new concept. Uh, but it also has dual root file system parts, and, and then they have three extra upper system parts that you have to reserve for the resin IO, uh, resin OS. And uh, from what I understand, they only support EMMC and SD cards. Uh, so I, don't, I haven't seen any non support or UB support. Uh, and now to integrate, there is a meta resin layer, uh, which is the starting point for the resin OS. Uh, I will not talk so much about uh, NPM. Yeah, I will just. Uh, but uh, what you need, you have to include meta resin, and then you have to have create a custom board, custom board layer. Uh, but the key takeaways is uh, that you have to add inherits of resin U boot and uh, uh, inherit kernel resin, which will do a lot of config. Kernel resin at least uh, does a lot of configuration of the kernel, current Linux kernel, to support uh, container technology. They have a lot of requirements for that. So you basically add inherits, and, and, and then they should take care of that. And you also need to provide an update hook, which is a bash script, basically, in your custom uh, layer. But if we take a closer look for the operating system updates, uh, which is the AB strategy, this is very similar to how Mender does it, basically. Uh, they have three patches that are board independent and that are applied to U-boot. Uh, and this is a set of variables and scripts and commands. Uh, and then you need to provide a board specific patch to integrate in a similar fashion like in Mender uh, to call these resin IO specific commands in your boot, boot flow. They also have a dependency on command part and partition uh, IDs. Uh, and unlike Mender, Mender, the Mender, Mender relies on the U boot firmware utils to write to the U-boot environment, where they have the, the, part, the variable that says which is the active part. Uh, in resin, they have a text file in the boot partition instead, which is imported. Uh, so there's no requirement to have a firmware utils. And if we take a look at the exa example patch, this is for, I think, for the very cited art uh, 6UL board. How the, what the patch does. So it basically removes all the hard-coded stuff like we did in, the, like Mender does it, uh, and replace it with uh, resin IO, well, resin specific variables. Uh, and you also have, there's only a prepend in this case uh, to the boot command, so they don't have a append that tries to recover uh, in this particular case. And this is basically, they use some uh, resin IO specific variables uh, to set up what to boot, basically. Um, yeah. And uh, I wanted to mention a bit about, uh, initially I had a very high ambition on covering very more projects, and uh, Rauk, Rauk was one of them. I was planning on also looking how to integrate that, but uh, it kind of fell out because I didn't have time to prepare it. Uh, but also, I, I tried looking at it uh, a bit. Uh, they have a meta Rauk layer, uh, but that only integrates the client side of it, or and you have to get the artifact tool as well. Uh, but I couldn't really find any reference implementations on how to integrate. Uh, but Rauk is very similar to software update uh, because it, it's also a tool or a framework to enable software updates on your devices. So it's not a out of the box solution. Um, and then there is something called SWUUPD, which is also software update when you pronounce it, I guess. Uh, there is a meta software update layer, but this is not to my understanding, use that much. Uh, I haven't really used it in many of my projects, at least. Uh, 
and uh, yeah, I'm with the summary already. So yeah, and these open pro pro open source projects have been there for a while, uh, most of them, uh, which makes them proven and battle tested and. Uh, And there is, it's really a seamless integration if you are using Yocto. It's of course tougher if you don't use Yocto or want to integrate with build, build root and, or manually integrate it on a Debian system or something like that. Uh, but if you are using Yocto, it's basically including some meta layers and providing a patch and then you're done in most of this. And, and that is why there is no reason to really go home, design your own systems or go homegrown completely. And instead, we can collaborate on these projects that are existing and build upon them and improve them, so to say. And um, yeah, questions? I will. Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm not familiar that anyone really solves the up, up, update beside resin because they have focused on that. Uh, all of the ones that I mentioned are really image-based, so full system updates, basically. Uh, and like you mentioned, Libuos3 does apply deltas, but you have to reboot. Uh, Flatpak, I'm not sure. I, I'm fam fairly familiar with Flatpak, but I'm not sure how, how they use Libuos3. Yeah. Okay. Mm, problem. You haven't seen any resiliency issues with any of these solutions? I mean, uh, for example, those which don't retain a full AV copy of the file. Well, AV copies are or the is the most robust solution, uh, in my opinion. And uh, if you are able to have two copies of the root file system, because in some cases you can't can't physically have it because you don't have the flash for it, so to say. But if you can, I, I don't see, really, really see a better and more robust option to do deploy updates. Uh, so do you see OS3 as being less resilient? Than no. I haven't actually deployed LibreOS 3 in a really harsh production environment to really get that feedback if it's really resilient. But um, by nature, LibreOS 3 relies on the hardware and uh, the drivers and the file system to handle atomic, well, atomic updates. So it relies on the underlying layers to be resilient to power loss or stuff like that which you don't really have uh, when you do an AB update, then uh, you, you kind of eliminate a bit of the hardware issues. Uh, one thing I'm gratitude is Node uses a considerable amount of disk space. If the addition, I mean, like 300 meg worth of partition, I mean, you know about the speed. Yeah, because it's, it's a complete yeah, it's op operating system that you have to integrate to be able to use the container deltas, basically. So yeah, you have to have a container. Uh, I know they have an embedded uh, one, uh, where we have variant. I think they started out with Docker, but they have a, something called Bolina, yeah, that they use. Uh, but it's still, uh, I don't know. <laughs> mm. yeah? So just based on your description, it seems like a lot of these are trying to solve a problem of how to keep the root file system up to date. Mm. Well, these solve the problem that you'd only have a, you have a top version, so it's full full image based updates. Uh, and in the vendor case, like it updates the root file system. And if you want to update the Linux kernel and the device tree, 
it has to be in the root file system. Otherwise, it can't update it. Uh, and Bender, for example, can't update U-boot because yeah, it's generally unsafe to do that. So the, they avoid that. Uh, you can, with the other project, like software update, uh, update U-boot as well. But, uh, but generally, since it's full disk image updates, uh, you have a top version, and then you can find out what the other versions are for U-boot, for kernel, for other packages, so to say. And you always update everything, you know. Yeah. Um, do any of these support like uh, image validation checks on downloaded installs, like image signing, image cache checking, and stuff? Yeah, uh, uh, all of them. I, I would say support that. Uh, I know Menders at least they at least support uh, signed images and uh, compre it's compressed images, of course. Uh, uh, software update supports signed and encrypted images. Uh, uh, Libuestry is like it's a lib library, uh, so you have to have a client on top that, which is the actualizer, for example, that talks with the backend. And I, I would assume I, I don't really know how they implement the download there, but I would assume that they have at least uh, check some checks <laughs> on the files downloaded. Uh, Well, yeah, I've been in the same situations many times that you have a small microcontroller that you need to update. Uh, and it's quite easy when, if you do full image updates to have a post-process post step, like on first boot, update the microcontroller as well. Uh, and all, all of these projects, you have something like that, uh, like uh, post-install scripts, that or hooks that you, you can hook on, hook on to, to run custom. Uh, update procedures for your uh, microcontrollers. So I would say it's solvable. Uh, but I think that the one that's probably trying to handle it best is software update that really is trying to focus a bit about distributed updates and trying to update, yeah, or have a like proxy devices that update other devices and stuff like that. Uh, it's been, Yeah, and that is the meta updater, which is the actuali actualizer. Yeah, which, which does have a, a component to uh, firmware update on. Microsoft. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't say that. I mean, yeah, you, you have to raise the full uh, in partition that you're updating. Uh, but especially if you use UB uh, files, well, yeah, UB, then you at least spread out uh, wear leveling equally over your whole uh, volumes. Uh, but it's one erase cycle per update, or maybe two, because you need to update a variable somewhere in. Uh, on a U-boot environment or something like that. So, but one would have to calculate like how many up if you have 100,000 cycles on your NAND flash or 10,000 cycles. Yeah, you, the more your size you have, you the more wear leveling will you have, of course. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Did you have a question? Mm -hmm. No, it's more of issue when you know like non controllers. But then you have the UB file system that tries to like do the wear leveling for you or like the UB layer of Never worked with that, so no. sorry. I think EMC has some funky special root partition mode on 
No, not that I'm aware of. I know that the EMCs have some, uh, but there are still normal partitions on EMC, They're just called boot one or boot two, I guess. Uh, so I don't think it's a problem to integrate uh, with that. Any more questions? Hmm? Any idea why everyone has a U-boot fork? Why everyone has a U-boot fork? Well, they all hmm. Yeah, they could probably. But it, what they do is they make sure that their variables exist in the default environment. Like, they enforce that. That's really not so. If you upstream it, you you like. Well, they need a mechanism, then, right? Yeah, you could have a config for it to yeah, enable it. To, uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone has tried if if if, if you would would accept something like that, like, uh, but it's possible. They are highly, yeah, every board is different, like, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, but you and Progress have changed the name of Progress. I think it has to fly with Commander, with two images for AOB, and there was some environment that... Uh, I changed the slide, 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 yeah. yeah. In a single update system, or? Uh, I think for Commander, on the top, on the slide, you have to basically A, B, and then something else. It's like a single, it looks like a single point of paper, and stuff like that. Uh, well, in the case of Mender, they have A, B, like for the root file system, then they have a data partition, which is like where you put the persistent data. So a Mender update doesn't touch that area at all. So if you want to keep data, you put it there, basically. And that's normally what you do when you're in an AB. You have an area where you, like, if you have a database or something that you want to save across updates, and you keep it in the separate partition. Any more questions? Well, thank you. Thank you.